It is Wednesday afternoon, and you know what that means. It's Wednesday Mad Dash time. It's Mad Dash part five? Five. Kind of a late start. I got some things that I wrote down that have happened to me throughout the week. That is the point of a Mad Dash Wednesday to air out all my grievances with the previous week. Last week, I had a problem with working on Friday nights, all the things that happen Fridays. Check out that video. I also randomly got that BJ's bulk water order that I went on a little rant on. So, you know what? Instead of just jumping into what I've written, I'm gonna activate here in University Park and give it a chance because I'm really in a good mood today. It's, oh, it's overcast, it's, it's cool outside here in Florida. Um, I really don't want to yell in my car or rant, but it seems to me like that all changes after I get a few deliveries, a few offers. So let's see what happens. It is 1.38 p.m. Very late start. This is like when I'm usually ending my shift or thinking about ending it. But let's uh, work a couple hours because I had a pretty good light uh, night last night with um, my priority status, which is insane. We are in full Emperor Return of the Jedi mode. The Emperor is at 93%. Oh, I'm afraid my 93% priority status will be quite operational by the time you other dashers arrive. Oh, I'm afraid the deflector shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. Come, boy. See for yourself. From here, you will witness the final destruction of the Alliance and the end of your insignificant rebellion. All right, first order. They're testing me. But here's the thing. At this time, I'm gonna do this Dash Mart because I've been doing Dash Marts um, rather often uh, the past few weeks and I'm always getting free shit there, man. And sometimes it's like kind of worth it. Like, all right, this is a no tip Dash Mart, but fuck man, last week I got two ga uh, half gallons of whole milk, you know, and fuck, that's as good as a three, four dollar tip to me. You know, I'm a big cereal guy. So it's like one less thing I gotta get. Um, they had some Sprite Zeros. I took a couple of those. Then the next time I went, they had some um, Miss Vicky's potato chips. Got a few bags of those. Let's see what they got. Last week they had hot dog buns. So I went to Winn-Dixie, got some hot dogs. I ate hot dogs that whole week. I'm not mad at the Dash Marts. Now, the ones I got last night were pretty good. I got like a 950 Dash Mart, only like two little bags. Um, a couple days ago, I had another Dash Mart that was 875. Like, Dash Mart's been hitting to me. And I will say this for DoorDash customers, I don't, man, I don't even know why you would shop at a CVS or a Walgreens, bro. I would I would look into if you have a Dash Mart available in your area because man, every time I shop and deliver, there's usually something that's missing or I have to communicate with the customer and ask what, you know, what they want to replace. Sometimes there isn't a replacement. Dash Mart you know you're getting whatever the hell they have. They 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 have their own inventory. I'm I'm pretty sure, like you're gonna get everything that you order from Dash Mart, and you're probably gonna get it faster. 
because you don't have to wait for a dasher to shop for it. And they got the same shit as any convenience store. Hell, they even do flowers. I did a flower video. Check that out. All right, so let's knock out this $3.75 Dash Mart with the added potential of getting some free food. <laughs> Sometimes they have like two liter gallons of soda, um, bread, like regular bread. Shit, man, that stuff's expensive at the supermarket, you know, if you if you get it on a week-to-week -week basis. It's worth it for me, man. Now, if I go to this Dash Mart and there's no free food, the second Dash Mart order I get that's a lowball offer, I'm gonna have to decline that, you know? But I will give it a shot as the first order of the day. Let's go to Dash Mart and see what we can get to uh, supplement the fact that this guy did not tip me extra. All right, I've shown the facade of this Dash Mart before. It's nothing, uh, nothing special. It's at, it's on Bird Road and 72nd Avenue. All right, I got the Dash Mart. It was just one bag. Lady lives seven minutes away. And they also gave me a few things. They didn't have anything out front, so I asked. Sometimes you gotta ask that they have something in the cooler. And I got some uh, little snacks. But let's go ahead and uh, deliver this real quick, and then we'll do a we'll do a Dash Mart haul. <laughs> All right, I dropped that Dash Mart off, and. This is perfect, because I was looking at my list of uh, grievances or topics, and I didn't know which one to do first. And this one um, is a part of one of the ones I, I wrote down. There was no fucking address on this house. Not that it's hard to see, or um, it's somewhere hidden, or no, there's no, there was no numbers on this house. I looked everywhere, I looked the whole facade. First of all, your address should be easy to see, okay? The mailbox in front of the house did not have an address. Well, look, what a pain in the ass it must be for everyone who has to deliver mail to you, UPS, Amazon, I mean, people, we live in a world of delivery. Do everything you can to make it easier for workers to give you the products that you ordered. And this goes also for people that, I do a lot of late night deliveries and this has happened to me in the past week. This is also a thing, I mean, I know UDM talked about this on a video recently, uh, some comment on his videos people don't leave the fucking porch lights on man and it's really really frustrating man and a lot of the times I know it's boy and I hate this check out that video where I talk about Mike Tyson's punch out and delivering to little kids ordering off their parents phones I know sometimes it's kids that are ordering and don't want their parents to know that they're ordering DoorDash at fucking, you know, 12 a.m. for candy or McDonald's or whatever the hell they want. But bro, some of these houses, it's so dark, man. And there's no street lights, there's no porch lights. Not only can you not see the address, but bro, you can trip and fall, man. Like, it's very unsafe. Fuck, man, I almost tripped the other day. And one time, I wasn't vlogging when this happened, was I did, uh, it was a nice, wealthy house, too. It wasn't like a little kid order. This guy lived in a really gated community. Come on, bro, you live in a gated community, bro. Have, have some porch lights, especially if you know you just ordered some fucking sushi, bro. I walked up to this guy's uh, house, and I completely tripped over his front uh, doorstep because there was a step that it was just you couldn't see it and um, 
I know people are like, well, just get a flashlight. You should have a flashlight. I have a fucking flashlight, motherfucker. I have a flashlight. I don't like using it at fucking 12 at night. Bro, you look like a fucking cat burglar. You know, and you don't want to shine light in people's homes. And what if you're in the wrong, what if you're in the next door neighbor's house? You know, no one likes their shit being shined. People are trying to sleep. People have babies. People have dogs. All right. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all I'm going to give that Ram. Just, if you order food, do your best to have a porch light on. All right, my next order is at this place, Clean Meals. Not a great order, but it was close by, and I'm gonna knock it out. Uh, it's like a smoothie place, but anyways, yeah, that day that I tripped, I think that guy was like a no-tipper or something, and that just adds insult to injury. Like, man, bro. There are some customers that really don't give a fuck about you. Don't give a fuck about how much money you make or your safety at that point. Like, bro, put your goddamn lights on, bro. You just ordered something, you fucking grown adult. That's why I think a lot of times when that happens, it's a kid ordering, you know? who, You know, kids don't think about that sh kind of shit because that's not their house. All right, here we are. It's a little hidden... Uh, food court here. These parking lots are not the best, bro. They're so compact, you know, and there's like a lot of shit here, bro. It's like a fucking restaurant, a dry cleaner, a fucking, you know, health place. Like, bro. All right, we have the clean meals. Just two items. Putting it in the Jenny Craig cold hot bag. <sighs> All right, I have delivered that clean meals. It's here on Flagler and 87th. It's the Alex Hanna um, traffic ticket office. And I've delivered here before. During the middle of the pandemic, I remember doing a delivery here when we were all wearing masks. And I remember going in there with my mask and right at the entrance, there are some desk offices, you know, some desk jobs, and everybody there had to wear a mask at their desk. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, I felt so sorry for the people that had to work an office job during that weird time when you can go to the office, but you still had to wear a mask at, at all times. Ugh. It was a pain in the ass even for DoorDashers. I remember like, I don't think I was vlogging. No, I started this, I started doing daily vlogs on DoorDash after the mask thing was already optional or whatever, not required. But I remember all throughout the pandemic how it was such a pain in the ass. It was just one more thing you had to do when you were doing a delivery, remember to put the mask on and then in the car, take it off. Cause I mean, you're not a moron, right? You're not gonna leave it on in the car while you're driving alone. It's just such a weird time and well, I'm glad it's over. All right, before I forget, let's, let's do the Dash Mart haul. All right, Baconettes, hot and spicy chicharrones, all right. Oh, okay, cool. Tony's frozen pepperoni pizza. Deep dish pizza. Microwave or oven bake. This is good. This uh, gives me an opportunity to try out uh, the oven my Aunt Rosa gave me for my uh, apartment. So, that's all right. It looks like um, this being in my car is going to freaking cook it before I get home. We got coffee cake, Nemo's coffee cake. Looks good. All right, we got a slice cake, Nemo's again. Butter pound slice cake. Looks good. 
All right, a little carrot cake action going on. Nemo's again. These are really good. And the red velvet version. Awesome. Hey, you know what? That's a pretty good little haul. It um, almost makes me forget that I did a no-tip order. You see how that works? All right, I received a double order here at La Guajira Part 2. Now, who knows where La Guajira Part 1 is, but we're here at Part 2. And yeah, I know it's pronounced La Guajira. La Guajira, bro, La Guajira Parte 2. All right? But I'm speaking English, okay? And I know I have an accent in both languages, all right? Nothing nothing bothers me so much as when it happens with a lot of newscasters that are that have Hispanic last names or are Hispanic and it's like in a perfect English accent, the lady's like Hi, welcome to Channel 7 News at 9 o'clock. I'm Maria Rodriguez de la Montañas de la Época de la blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. Just say your name's Maria Rodriguez, Fernandez, Gonzalez. Just say it in English, okay? We're okay. We get it. You're Hispanic. You're very special. You're a minority, and you're a very privileged fucking group. Give me a break. You know, I still say Pollo Tropical, and uh, sometimes I even say Polo. I find it's more impressive. Look, if you're speaking English, speak in an English accent. If you speak in Spanish, speak in a Spanish accent. I find it more impressive if you know the difference. It's like all of a sudden you just switch into your little virtue signal Hispanic accent. And you know what? Most of the people who do that don't even speak fluent Spanish. They're just signaling to you like, look at me. I'm a different categorization of American citizen. I am so ethnic. I am so, you know, worldly. Jesus Christ, give me a break. I say my name, I go Mario Mateo de Acosta when I'm speaking to somebody who speaks English. Now, if I'm in the Dominican Republic or in Mexico or something, I, I'll say Mario Mateo de Acosta or, you know, whatever. You speak however the hell you think your audience is going to perceive it the best. You know? That's my opinion, all right? No, no, this is a rant video, so I'm kind of like, you know, emphasizing it a little bit more than I normally would. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's annoying. And by the way, it's annoying to non-Spanish speakers too. It's like, hello. My name is Roberto Gonzalez del Monte de las Nubes de la Piña. Bro, I got news for you, bro. Your name is Robert Gonzalez, dog. Uh-oh, here is a little um, school zone traffic jam that I need to finagle because my entrance is right here. Oh man, see this is why I don't like school time. This is just, and it's always the people that live by a fucking school that order around this time, you fucking assholes. Luckily, both of these clients tipped extra, so I'm not that aggravated about it, but it's always the people that live right next to a school. They're like, oh, gee, goshy, gee, willikers, wouldn't it be easier to just door dash? Yeah. <sighs> they always live close to the restaurants, too. First order dropped off. Now I gotta avoid the, the traffic getting out of this place. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Gonzalez. You need to anglify your name to make it more palpable to the regular people of the country. Understand? Comprende, dickhead. Ah, now I'm just trolling. <laughs> right, right. But come on, bro. That If you grew up in America, bro, you did not say your name that way growing up in middle school, all right? I'm sorry. You just started doing that 
once it be once you think once you thought you can gain points why once it became popular shit i uh sometimes i say mario hey mario mario yeah that's my favorite race car driver man mario andretti that's right mario what do you guys say super mario brothers or super mario brothers or do you say mario Mario, Mario, Super Mario Brothers. I remember seeing commercials for Nintendo and the guy would say Mario Brothers. Super Mario 2, only from Nintendo. Now, Super Mario Brothers. All right, both of these orders were here in the Fountain Blue apartments that I delivered to, what was that, yesterday? No, Monday? My DoorDash quickie, where that was a really short video. That's probably the shortest DoorDash vlog I've ever done. Um, where I said I always deliver to these apartments, and that guy was appreciative because he tipped me 10 bucks. Now, this lady didn't tip me 10 bucks, but at least it's extra. Just look what a shit show all these apartments are. It's like people moving, speed bumps. I hate speed bumps. narrow parking spaces all right I delivered both of those orders and as I stated in that Monday video this is a good area to be in in University Park it's almost the same hot spots as the other day um watching some uh, YouTube uh, <clears throat> YouTube uh, door dashers. This is um, this cool little chick, Megan Reisman. She does a lot of, she does really good um, walkthroughs. She has the camera on her hat, which makes for some pretty funny uh, uh, shots. Pretty funny moments at the restaurants she picks up from, like, you know, people waiting, you know, people, people not acknowledging you while your order is clearly just sitting there waiting for you, you know, and they're not even, that happens to me all the time. Just I never film it, you know, because I don't have a camera on me. But she has a recent video where she talks about DoorDash slowing down. And it's funny because I had a good night last night, but I've also had DoorDash lull videos where I feel like, especially on the weekdays, it's getting a little scarce out here, guys. I mean, I remember I used to, I used to work exclusively dinner and late night. And I'll tell you, it didn't matter what day of the week it was. I used to be busy till three, sometimes four in the morning, man. Like getting orders. Like, I remember it wouldn't be uncommon that at 2 in the morning, 2, 2.30 in the morning, I'd still be like, bling, 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 getting orders. Not anymore, man. Now, after one, you're lucky if you get one order. Which brings me to my next little point. These DoorDash peak pays, starting at 11.30, ending at 1.30, that's how it is in my market in all these zones. Kendall, you don't, you, it always switches, but Target Grocery for six bucks. Okay, let me stop this. Yeah, you know what? It's delivering FIU six items and it's raining. So I, I don't mind being in Target shopping for six things. It's only six bucks, but whatever. All right. Where is this Target? Okay, it's the one right here. Great. I'm in the right lane. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. Kendall, South Miami, University Park. Fuck, you even throw Doral in there. Homestead, Palmetto Bay. They all, if there is a peak pay, by the way, and the peak pays used to be three bucks. Like always, it was either no peak pay or $3 peak pay. Now they're like fucking with you. $2, $1, $2 over here, $1 over there. 
pick and choose. I always, I'm starting to pick the $1 peak pays above the $2 peak pays. Because like last night, I did three different zones. I hopped over. Uh, but University Park was slamming me with orders and they were the only zone with a $1 peak pay. South Miami has like 250. South Miami's dead at night, so like just ignore that. That's just in case you want to do a last delivery. <sighs> Hopefully you'll get a McDonald's or something or a Taco Bell. But I stayed in the $1 zone and I was getting consistent orders now. Is that because Kendall had $2 and Palmetto Bay had $1.50? And everywhere, everywhere else was basically over a dollar. Mind you, I'm also dashing at the 90 percentile priority rate, which is insane. So what's better, getting an extra dollar peak pay or getting priority access in a pool of less drivers? Since the bait wasn't out there for the, for the $2 peak pay instead of the one. I don't know. It seemed to work out for me last night. I, I made it more than I usually make uh, for that time frame on a Tuesday. Shit. Um, what was the other point? Whatever. Let me shop for this target and then I'll collect my thoughts because I'm rambling here. All right. I have the orders. Just a couple bags. It did have a 24 pack of water which I had to ask the Target employee because they didn't have these in the display. He had to go to the back, but he found it. Um, I was going to use this thing, which my father gave me while we were moving out. Um, it has wheels and it's collapsible. And I got this specifically to do water deliveries because you can see here it's got a little grip here with a little dolly. So but it's delivering to FIU campus, so I can't go to those apartment, uh, you know, living spaces anyways. So I'm not gonna be able to use that for the first time. Can I just say that it is a beautiful overcast day? and it's nice and cool out. And something about going to Target is very like, I don't know, peaceful. Like I love going into a Target. It's just so clean and nice in there and things are organized and you can get to see everything that's available to you. Even if you don't shop, I recommend just going into a Target. If you're, if you're depressed, Go into a Target. You'll you'll cure cure your depression right away. Another interesting thing. Now I've been getting a lot of shop and deliver emails the past few weeks. Eh, I really don't pay attention to them because usually I've done a video before. Looking at those emails, they they don't provide you that much information. It's con kind of confusing. I, I don't I don't know what a fill rate is, and I don't know what I don't know what those percentages mean. I don't know if, uh, you know, I'm being graded on them or like, what, what? what's the purpose of that? Anyways, well today I get this screen grab. I get this little display right as I hit start shopping. It says, get an extra $1 for high quality shopping. Meet the following criteria, blah, blah, blah. They're offering me an extra dollar. Now let's go right after I stop. I, I found all the items and then this is the next, before I uh, paid, this is the next screen I saw. Congrats, you've unlocked a dollar reward for this order. Okay, cool, that's cool. I wish it was more than a dollar, you know? Cause you know, a dollar is a dollar, but Fuck, man, $3 would have been nice. You know, that, that's what a peak pay would be. Um, and I basically, I guess it's, you meet one of those criterias of the three there because I found all the items. 
right? But I'm sure if you follow the customer's instructions for out of stock items, then I guess if, um, or if you contact the con customer with things that are unclear, whatever. Basically, they're just saying, do this order right and we'll give you, we'll throw you an extra tip. Cool, I get it. I like doing shop and delivers at Target because it's way easier than any other shop and deliver I've noticed. The dirty little secret about Target, especially with their like grocery section, is they don't have a lot of selection. So it's really easy to do the shopping. They either have it or they don't. Like there is no, like this, this one even had, this customer ordered meat and the way they do their meats is they do it by barcode anyways, just like a regular, just like a pack of M&Ms. So there's no wrong way to do a meat order. I've done meat orders at Winn-Dixie where I have to bust out the scale and like measure and type in how many ounces it is. You know, for like chicken wings and stuff, it tells you like how many ounces and you want, and then it calculates how much. You have to enter that into the app. That's just way, doing way too much for a shop and deliver, but I have done it. Um, anyways, let's deliver this shit to the, see in FIU, she's gonna have to come down to my car, so I'm not gonna use the cart. So, another day, water cart, another day. Oh yeah, I almost forgot what I was talking about before I did the Target order. Um, so these peak pays at 11.30 are getting to the point where I feel like there's a secret little war going on between DoorDash and McDonald's. Because let's face it, these peak pays are in place from DoorDash mainly because people don't tip when they order McDonald's. From 11.30 to 1.30, the majority of the orders you get are McDonald's, maybe Wendy's, Taco Bell, those are still open to a degree, Wawa, shop and deliver CVS's and stuff. But for the most part, McDonald's is your main, like I, I log in sometimes in any of the zones down here after 11.30, McDonald's are all the hot spots. I'm talking about if there's four hot spots, they're all McDonald's. The McDonald's on 8th, the McDonald's on, on Bird and Ludlam, the McDonald's on Bird and 113th, the McDonald's on um, uh, in South Miami. All the hot spots are McDonald's. And what happens? Look, I took a screen grab of a McDonald's order I did for no tip. Check that out. Look at how much shit this motherfucker ordered at a McDonald's. $29 worth of McDonald's? And you know it's not for a fucking family, bro. That's just for him, bro, because he got one McFlurry, right? If it was if it was for a group of people, there'd be two McFlurries. <laughs> you fucking gluttonous fuck. $29 worth of McDonald's, and here's the final tip out. Goose egg, baby. And the dude lived in a nice area of Miami near the McDonald's like bro you can't you can't throw in two bucks bro like you just ordered thirty dollars worth of fucking McDonald's bro like and I had to wait in a drive through for you you know and you look like you live in a nice little house you have Halloween decorations out front family man Bro, come on, bro. Give a little heads up to the dude that just fucking waited on you to for your stupid fucking gluttonous McDonald's order. Like, I get it. People try to order the most shit at a McDonald's and keep the keep the bill the lowest, you know, get more bang for their buck and have it delivered. But come on, bro. Like, this is why and the, this order I believe was right before 11:30. That's why it didn't have a $2 peak. But, you know, normally this would have been like what? A 550 order or a 450 order even if the customer didn't tip. Which would make it a little more worthwhile, you know, I get it. And so I feel like 
The only reason DoorDash is even offering these peaks is because of you cheap ass McDonald's customers who feel McDonald's should be delivered to you for free. And the gas in my car doesn't cost me anything. The, to get my new tires every fucking six months doesn't cost me everything. Well, not six months, but year or two. But to get them rotated and oil change, I gotta go to fucking um, Jiffy Lube actually this week. It's time for another oil change. That's gonna be another fucking hundred bucks. You know, depending on what shit else, you know, they figure out, you know, filters and all that shit. Like, you know, this shit adds up, man. And at what point is DoorDash gonna say to McDonald's, hey, look, we're delivering all these this food for you late night and uh, we're kind of losing money here. Like, either you gotta do something or, all right, let's, let me call this lady. Hold on, I'm here at FIU. All right, I delivered it to the uh, students here at FIU. This is the final breakdown here. I got the $1 additional tip. It was a no tip order, but I kind of, I kind of assumed that since it was $6 for a shop and deliver. I don't know, man. Maybe if that was a if that was a Win Dixie or a Sedano's, I probably wouldn't have done it. But I know Target is an easy shop and deliver. Look, look what it took me—twelve minutes to shop for it. And that is, I waited for a dude to go back there and find the water. Like, had the water just been in the right place in the display, I probably would have take would have taken me like less than ten minutes to do this order. And there was another, there was a lady in line, you know, whatever. Um, but all right, you gave me an extra dollar. That's cool, I guess. Like, still a low paying order. These are students though, I get it. They don't, they're broke, whatever. But back to the McDonald's issue here. Now I didn't go to business school. I'm not a smart businessman. But if I ran a company that was having to pay its drivers extra because your customers aren't footing the bill, something's gotta give at a certain point because either you're gonna have to provide that to DoorDash, McDonald's, or DoorDash is, you're gonna start getting less of, uh, deliveries from them because I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know why DoorDash should have to pay us extra to make it worthwhile to deliver your product to your customers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know one hand washes the other, and at that time, there's not a lot of things open but McDonald's. But I don't know. I've been hearing. I don't know. I read it like a few months ago. I even said this on one of my previous vlogs that they're gonna stop, that there was some kind of battle going on between DoorDash and McDonald's about uh, that they're losing money on these deliveries and they're gonna stop uh, uh, reimbursing people who, who cancel their orders or don't get their orders, something like that. I don't know, I'll Google it and maybe put a link or whatever in the description, um, but yeah. It just seems unfair that the peak pays are there basically for shitty McDonald's customers. And if that, you know? And like I said, the peak pays are few and far between these days. And it's getting to the point where I'm accepting like $4.50 orders during a $2 peak pay that I know are shitty orders because if I don't do them, um, if I decline that, I get put on the bottom of the queue of the deliveries and the next delivery I get, A, is not guaranteed to be a high paying order and B, I get around the time it would have took me to just deliver that $4.50 order that I declined. So basically, I just declined $4.50 making that less. So people don't understand, man. You get a feel for it, man. When you see orders aren't coming in, 
I'm not about declining orders because you're not guaranteed that next one, buddy. And if you're in it for the long haul and you need to pay your bills at the end of the week, you might have to take a couple undesirable orders at that time, at, on those times, in order to break even, man. Anyways. All right, I got a Pizza Hut delivery. I'm gonna just go ahead and knock this out. It's crazy, but I've been, I think I, the last order I declined was like three days ago, three or four days ago. Like I've been on a pretty good acceptance streak. Like this is probably one of the shitty, I could have declined this one. This is a 350 Pizza Hut that is not very desirable, but. I just want to see how high I can get that acceptance rate. I was at 93 at the beginning of this video. Let's see what I am at the end. All right, I guess I'm going to finish off. I had one more rant, but I think I'm going to save that one for next week because that one's a, it's an evergreen rant. It's not even about DoorDash. It's about some shit that I saw on a delivery uh, last week that just, uh, just made me question shit. Anyways, I'll save that rant because it's not really about DoorDash. It's about somebody, it's about a pedestrian and uh, traffic uh, problem. So I'll save that for next week. But back on the topic, as before I sign off, speaking of that lull video and that other YouTuber, Megan Reisman, saying that it's the DoorDash orders she feels are slowing down. And I definitely feel that here in Miami. Another thing that I noticed that's kind of giving me a red flag is that, I don't know about you guys, I've been getting these DoorDash deals for like 30% off a pickup order. For me, as a DoorDash customer, like they're giving me deals. They're like, thanks for dashing. I, I don't know, I'll try to screen grab an email but it just seemed really weird that they're offering drivers, they're basically telling drivers, please use our service, please use our service. And I'll be honest with you, I use DoorDash, man. Not as much as I used to before I was a Dasher. When I was making good money, I was, I was ordering DoorDash like three, four times a week, bro. It was like, woo, I was, I was balling. You know, it was no thing, bro. Sushi Maki, Chicken Kitchen, Outback Steakhouse, yeah, baby. I was uh, uh, Dom Burrito, Taco Rico, fucking Shake Shack, Five Guys. Bro, I was balling. Now, when I use it, I mainly, um, I use the pickup feature, you know? Since um, I'm on the road most of the time now, I'm not on an office job or at my house just lounging. But I think it's pretty strange that they're telling their drivers to use their service. Here, we'll give you it's a discount. We'll give you, I mean, they say that uh, Henry Ford, when, back when they were like in the factories making the Mo Ford Model T, which is like the first mass produ produced car, um, that he gave his employees a pay raise and part of the reasoning was he wanted his factory workers to be able to afford the cars they were making. It's kind of a smart idea, right? But I kind of equate that to what DoorDash is telling you, like, hey, you know, use our service. But it's also a little scary to think that things are slowing down that much that DoorDash is begging their drivers to use their service as well. Like, I don't know. There might be something there. I don't know. There might be something there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out this Pizza Hut. I'm not gonna film it, not gonna vlog. Thanks for joining me on my Mad Dash for Wednesday lunch. Kind of a shitty day, it just turned into a shitty day all of a sudden. This rain, it's gloomy. Uh, anyways, take care.